Hello everyone, David J. Kuhn with Qigong Awareness. This is our Qigong t-shirt, uh, Qigong Awareness. Notice the name there, important name. And Harness the Force, can you see that? Yeah, Harness the Force, awesome. Like in Star Wars, right? So Qigong, first of all, means the skilled cultivation of universal life force or energy. Many of you also know I'm not just a Qigong instructor. I'm not just a Qigong master. I have 37 years background in the martial arts. I have a vast background in psychology, both Eastern and Western psychology, a background in all kinds of different sciences, molecular, cellular biology, emergency medicine, etc., etc. I am the author of Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. It can be found on Lulu and also on Amazon. We're going to talk about this book today and some of the principles that are in it, some of the teachings that I've been carrying around for the last X number of years. 12 years old, uh, got into an accident. 15 years old, being told that I have scoliosis and journeying very intense scoliosis uh, along with panic disorders. Uh, anxiety, depression, uh, some drug and alcohol use for about three years of the tour there, being told that I'll be crippled by the time I was 30 years old. And at 28 years old, approximately from 25 to 28, reversing the spinal disease finally after many years of effort and so on. But of course, most people don't ever do it in a lifetime, right? So I've had my share of success in that. Along the way, I have helped a lot of other people. I went on to get black belts in different martial arts. None of that would have been possible without some of these practices of Qigong. And in this particular book, I'm not just uh, teaching you Qigong exercises, although I think there are specific Qigong exercises that are hacks. I think they're shortcuts. I know they are for me personally and also for many clients that I've worked with over the years. They're hacks, they're shortcuts. Uh, re what I want to say, um, restructuring your body, restructuring your cellular uh, body all the way down to the DNA, reprogramming the body, the mind, the emotional body, uh, so many different things, uh, reprogramming how we breathe, how we speak, how we walk, um, what our posture is, because it all affects our molecular cellular biology all the way down to the DNA. So does it have to do with our health? Yes, absolutely it does. But it also has to do with your job. It also has to do with the people that sort of uh, circle around you in your life, okay? So in this particular series, what I'm attempting to do is go a little bit from the beginning because some of you know me better and you've seen me in seminars and maybe you're in our Qigong instructor certification program or our medical Qigong instructor, uh, sort of a medical Qigong practitioner that is, uh, program. And so you know me better. You've seen me in action. You've come to the seminars. You've come to the live workshops, or maybe you've uh, just worked with me on with some of the online workshops, but you have some idea of what I'm up to. Many people who come to the seminars will come to me afterwards and they go, oh my God, how do we get there? How do we get there from where we started? Like, I don't even understand. I know we did some Qigong exercises. I know that, that we then did some meditation. I know that we then did some awakening lectures and you were sharing intellectual, you know, deep concepts and philosophy with us and so on and different theories about how this work works. And then we did some medical Qigong healing sessions on each other. And by the way, one of the things I love about let's say any of this work, whether it's the live program or teaching people how to do distance healing. I'm gonna give you a quick story. I had a guy come to a seminar, about 25 people there. It was in a physical therapy uh, studio. And there were a few physical therapists there that worked downstairs for me. They asked me to do a seminar, I did this seminar. So during the seminar, one of the things that I love to do is I love to teach in all of my seminars, all of my workshops, whether you want to be a medical Qigong practitioner or not, doesn't, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, there are benefits to it, but if you just are a lay person and you're like, well, what does this energy work do? What does this holding my hands out like this do? I'm going to tell you a quick story. So many people are caught up in their own disease, their own problems, uh, their own stress. I was one of them when I was younger. I had so many things, so many go th things going wrong for me, okay? 
But one of the things that really helped me, all right, aside from Qigong practice itself, martial art practice itself, many psychological techniques and so on and so forth, breathing practices, pranayama, breath of fire, etc., etc. One of the things that really helped me was being a channel and a conduit for healing and bringing healing to other people. I've been doing that now for approximately 37 years and uh, last count. And, and it's mind blowing. I've asked this energy, whatever you want to call it, universal life force, God, source, Tao, whatever you want to call it, but I've asked it to come through me and come through my body. And I started doing that when I was about 15 years old, right in the middle of being diagnosed with a very serious dis-ease that they said would cripple me by the time I was 30 years old. I was in pain. I was suffering. I had anxiety. Now, granted, it wasn't like today, right, where I'm seeing a lot of people. I see a lot of people. I treat a lot of people, whether it's in person, distance, whether it's this city or that city or that town, or coaching different groups and audiences and how to put this together, whether it's teaching in the Qigong certification program or the medical Qigong practitioner certification program or life coaching and executive coaching, okay, what, whatever it is, or teaching martial art. I do all of these things, okay? That's not, oh, look how great I am. It's just those are the things that I do. Those are the habits that I've come to participate in. Okay, so back to this guy. He comes into the seminar and uh, he's hunched over. The guy's like 80 years old. He comes in. He's very hunched over. He's, you know, walking funny. He's got a cane and all that. And... Uh, I found, let's see, how did I find out? Somewhere along the way, actually I didn't know it to begin with, they ended up telling me later that he had been in a car accident, so major car wreck, okay? So that's why he was like in this uh, shape and condition, but I didn't know. So we're doing the seminar and I had people start practicing some Qigong exercises, some breathing exercises, etc., right? So for an hour, okay? So this guy, I've never met him before, I don't really know his story. I can see that he's kind of teetering and stuff, and I can see that his physical therapists are worried that he might fall down, okay? So I can see them kind of like concerned, right? But the guy stands up, no problem, the whole hour, right? So after an hour of the program, uh, we finish that first hour and I ask people, do you, do you have any questions? This guy raises his hand and he says, can you tell me why I'm still standing? And I love that, of course. I was like, that's fantastic, right? And I said, uh, I said, you tell me why you're still standing. And he said, well, I just feel amazing. And I haven't been able to walk up and down that hallway for the last two years or something like that. And he's like, and I, and his physical therapist was like, yes, yes, he, he hasn't been able to walk up and down the hallway. Like, this is like amazing, right? So we went from that part of the program to having the guy uh, do some healing work. I love having people who seem to be broken and have nothing to give, right? They're exhausted, they're tired, they're broke, etc. right? I love taking that person and saying, hey, we're going to pray for, we're going to intend for, we're going to chant for, we're going to bring forth some mantras, we're going to send healing work, whatever sort of methods we use. And uh, we're going to send energy, we're going to offer energy, we're going to let it come through us and we're going to offer it okay, to somebody else. So he stood there and he was offering healing to this other woman who's doing like a standing tree meditation. She's just standing there, right? And her eyes are closed and she's kind of rocking back and forth a little bit. And he's sitting there with his hands out. This posture wasn't great, right? But he couldn't really stand up. Normally I'd come correct people's posture, but he couldn't really stand up. So he's, he's kind of like this the whole time, right? And he's teetering. And it was pretty funny on the level that it was because his two physical therapists stood next to him like, oh my God, I hope he doesn't fall down, right? And uh, he stood there the whole time and he had so much charge and so much energy. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, this is amazing. Here's this guy that's like on the level that he is like broken, right? Physically and everything else, like hard time, right? Here he is running energy for this other woman. I'm watching the other woman have like a metaphysical experience, okay? From his from him holding his hands like this, okay? Everybody else in the room's doing it too, okay? But he's doing it also, okay? And so all of a sudden, he's getting, he's standing taller and taller, okay? So at the end of the seminar, okay? Seminar was like two and a half hours, I believe. At the end of the seminar, he's standing at the front desk, okay? The guy has been standing the whole time. He never sat down. When I got to the desk and everybody else had walked out, uh, he's literally like the last person there and he says to me, can you tell me why I'm still standing? 
And he goes into this whole story all again, repeats the whole thing again, how, how it's been, you know, he tells me more details and so on. Guy stood there. He walked himself out to the car. He carried his cane. I'm not bullshitting you. This is literally, I see this happen a lot. Okay. What's going on? Well, I can't tell you all of what's going on because there are a lot of things that uh, are mysterious and they do have scientific principles. There are many sort of uh, scientific correlations that we can make and we can talk about and we can discuss. But I'm going to be honest with you. I've gone to school, multiple forms of school, you know, double rounds of college and, you know, high school and all of that. And, and many uh, forms of training within martial art, within Qigong, within Taoist practices and Buddhist practices, etc. I can't tell you that I can offer you everything that I have in one video. Okay, that's why we have a certification training program. Having said that, and while we have seminars and while we have all these different angles for people to come in at, the main thing I want you to understand is it's possible. If you think this stuff is possible, I healed my spine. I watched what this guy did. He's just another story, of, but it's an awesome story. Every story is an excellent story, but it is one story amongst many other stories. Is it possible for you? I hope as you watch this video series, you start realizing more and more and more, wow, maybe this is possible for me because man, David just keeps talking about people who are doing it. This person's doing it and this person's doing it and this person's doing it and David did it and this person's doing it. Well, can I do it? Yeah. Yeah, actually you can. So, but in order to do it, okay, we need momentum. We need momentum. So one of the things that I've wanted to do in this video series and I'm doing it is I want to take some of you, whether you've never met me before or you're currently working with me in some capacity, and I want to take you from some of the beginning steps. I want to give you an overview, but then I want to take you through some of the beginning steps. I'm going to be honest. I wrote this book, okay? So I'm a little biased, <laughs> okay? But this is an amazing book. And the reason I can say it's an amazing book is not just because I'm, I'm so amazing, okay? It's because of all the teachers and all of the different things that I studied. Oh my goodness, the stack of books that is represented by the teachings in this book is mind-blowing. It's mind-boggling. So my goal in writing this was to save you time and to give you tools that I wish I had 10 years sooner. And I do this all the time and I love taking my philosophies and my hypotheses and I love going out and turning them into theories and I love doing that by teaching other people how to do certain things and then watching them do it, watching them astound their physicians, watching them kick ass, etc, 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 okay? So let's talk about the book for a minute, okay? So I've done this a, a little bit in some of the first uh, episodes. We're kind of in the vicinity of chapter one, two, and three, all right? And so briefly, because I'm gonna go on to another video here momentarily, I don't want these to be too long, but I'm gonna go forward. Chapter one, okay? Chapter one reads, how does it work? Okay, and this is a quote that I read in one of the previous uh, episodes. If you want to be healthy and live to be 100 years, do Qigong. Okay, this is from Dr. Oz. Okay, I go into details about what Qi is, what energy is, how we can think about it, and then how we can work about it, or how we can work with it, that is. I'm sorry. So, chapter two is called Harnessing Your Energy. Okay, just like we have on the back of the t shirt that says Harness the Force. Okay. There are masters that have gone before me who figured out some secrets about the human body, about the, about how we're made up, okay? And I've been talking about one of those and I'll be talking about it for years to come. You can come join the program or skip over it, but I'm going to be talking about it for years to come. I talk about it in the certification program. I talk about it all the time. Lower Dan Tien, Lower Dan Tien, Lower Dan Tien. I know there are a lot of new age and uh, new scientific methods of uh, activating the pineal gland and, you know, activating the, the heart, like in heart math, uh, practices and bringing coherence to the heart and the brain and there's totally truth to all of those things 
There are many ancient practices designed to awaken these chakras, to begin working with the different glands, to begin because the glands again are associated with the chakras, okay? But different schools approach it differently. Some will start with the top of the head down, for example, like the pineal gland. Some schools, yogic schools in particular, certain esoteric yogic schools, will focus on, for example, beginning all meditation from the third eye or beginning all meditation on the crown. They sort of skip the rest of the body on the level that they do. It's not that it's not incorporated, but for example, you can see with those uh, folks that a lot of times, and it's no judgment or anything, it's just a particular path that I'm trying to point out here. Some of those folks, for example, can be significantly overweight, what you would consider to be overweight. That's, you know, in everybody's business and everybody's idea, but beyond what average weight would be, for example. But they're blissed out all the time and they're in samadhi, okay? And they're here and they're in their crown and their, their mind is always up this way. Here's the thing about that particular path for me and why it doesn't work for me. I'm a husband, I'm a, I'm a father, I am a business owner. I work in the world and I work with people in the world and I believe well, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not, but I've had visions since I was younger of living many incarnations, okay? Many, many dreams, many visions, etc., of being in Tibet and being in China and other places and being a monk and being a healer and, and a monk is a big one for me. And so for me, I believe I've been in the temple. That may sound crazy and outrageous to some of you. It doesn't really matter whether it happened or didn't happen, okay? But the thing is is that I like to work and be in the world and make change. And I also like to train my body. So some of you also know that one of the stories that I've told and others have sometimes told is that Bodhidharma, who's considered one of the uh, fathers, so to speak, of uh, modern Qigong, somewhat modern, because that was a long time ago, uh, came to China brought the Buddha's teachings from China to the Shaolin Temple. First, he actually came to the uh, emperor and so on, and they didn't want anything to do with him, so he retreated to the Shaolin Temple. He got to the Shaolin Temple, and the Buddhist monks there at the time were not training their physical body. This is what I'm, where I'm going with this. They're not training their physical body, not doing anything with their physical body. They sit there, they practice meditation, and they refer to their body as big skin bags, okay? So this monk came in, and Bodhidharma comes in, and he literally leaves the Shaolin Temple and goes to a nearby cave for nine years. He comes back with some of the first practices of Qigong. And his whole philosophy was, look, well, at least in part, was the, these monks are practicing for enlightenment, illumination. Again, some of the schools, their philosophy is the body's a big skin bag. You can just sit down, focus on the crown, and just sit there all day and connect to source and connect to samadhi and be blissed out and so on and so forth. And you can do that, but it's... Uh, it's, in, again, it's hard to totally describe because everybody has different opinions on this, but I consider those like sit in the temple, you know, go do that in the temple, so on. And uh, again, if you don't care about your physical body and you don't want to develop the tendons and you don't want to develop the musculature and you don't really care uh, if you live to be 85, for example, um, in other words, 85 is a good number or 75 is a good number, then, you know, maybe you don't need to worry about it. This monk came in and said, hey, you guys are dying at 50, 60, 80 years old. You're never going to figure out the secret to enlightenment. So we have to train the body. We have to train the body. We have to bring it into the body. We have to take these concepts of strength, compassion, vigor, vitality, and we have to bring it into the body. We have to harness it. Okay. So anyways, a little, little philosophy there and so on. So one of the big emphasis uh, emphasis is of my teaching and where I start, okay, is we do focus on the third eye, we do focus on the crown, we do focus on the heart, but we also have to focus on lower dantian. Lower dantian is the gut, 
Lower Dantian is the first reservoir, the elixir field that the energy runs out of. It's associated with your kidneys. It's associated with what's called essence. It's called your jing. You got to get it back. You got to harness as much of it as you can. No energy, no power. So in chapter number uh, three, I basically talk about that energy equals power. If you have energy, you have power, power to do something, power to change, power to make a difference. If you don't have energy, take a look at your life. Your mind's distracted, there's fear, thinking about this, thinking about that, bad habits, trying to get energy from sugar and so on and so forth. You have to begin harnessing your energy. You Got to come back and focus on, guess what? Not the news, not your neighbor, not your mother, your, your daughter, your best friend. You've got to focus on yourself first and you've got to focus on your body, okay? At least that's my teaching to you. You've got to focus on yourself, bring the energy back. Then we can actually focus. That's why I always in my programs, I teach Qigong first. Bring some healing energy to yourself. Okay, now we're going to do some healing over here. We're going to offer some of this over here, okay, to someone else. Both of those things change your psychology. They change what's going on in your subconscious mind. They also change what's going on in that chakra ladder. So in chapter number three, so uh, chapter number two is harnessing your energy. As I said, jumping ahead real quick. Chapter number three, again, energy equals power. This is where I read, this is my Tony Robbins quote. I read this before. I'm going to re read it again for our conclusion of this particular video. One reason so few of us achieve what we truly want is that we never direct our focus. Man, is that true? We never concentrate our power. So true. Most people dabble their way through life, never deciding to master anything in particular. Have you ever heard the saying, jack of all trades, master of none? So many people are jacks of all trades, or maybe they're not even a jack of any trade. Okay. But very few people master anything. Mastering your breath mastering how you walk, mastering how you move your hand, mastering how you do a physical movement and continue to repeat it over and over again, watching your breath, watching the physical movement of your body and using it and using it and embodying whatever principle you're working with. These are many of the practices that we do with Qigong. But I don't just stop there because Qigong alone, just like physical practice alone, it wasn't enough for me to heal myself. So there's a whole book on processes of using your words, using your speech, using mantra, using declaration, okay? Um, changing your mood, using certain types of breath. We're going to keep getting into it. Okay, so hopefully you got something good out of this video. Momentum is key. It is essential. I'm teaching you something that is likened unto a college course. You're not going to get it done in one day. You're not going to get it done in six weeks. You're not going to get it done in six months, but in six months, holy cow, can you make a difference in your life? In six years, six years, you're most likely going to be around, okay? Most of you listening to this are going to be around six years from now. What do you think is going to be different six years from now if your habits do not change? And I know there's a pandemic, right? I don't, I don't have time. I, I'm so scared. Uh, my focus is this. My focus is that. Your focus is distracted if that's the case. We need to harness it because if we don't harness our focus, we cannot harness our force. We cannot harness our energy and energy equals power. No energy, no power to make change in your life. Stay tuned. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about this pandemic. Probably very different than uh, you're hearing it in most places. I'm not going to get into all kinds of conspiracies and everything else. I don't really care. We're going to talk about Qigong and the pandemic. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next episode. And if you don't have the book, I highly recommend, go get it. Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality, lulu.com, amazon.com, or the front page, home page of qigongawareness.com, our website. All right, guys. Thank you. See you soon.